Hello, my name is Jim Averso, and I'm with the IW Tremont Company. I'm the co-president, and I'm here representing the Laboratory Products Association. I'm sitting with a panel uh, for discussion about talent acquisition and interest in our market. Hello. Uh, hey. Hey. Jim. I'd, I'd like it if you could introduce yourself. Uh, my name is John Faulkner. Uh, I am with BMP Medical. We are a contract manufacturer uh, in the medical consumable space. Hi, my name is uh, Kevin Haggerty. I'm with Eppendorf, uh, Director of Healthcare Sales and Channel Partner Management. Uh, at Eppendorf, we sell uh, mostly uh, uh, to the molecular biology market, uh, mostly uh, research, some uh, in hospitals. We have both uh, uh, hardware, like uh, cyclers, centrifuges, pipettes, and then also consumables. Hi, I'm Don Jackson with Cole Parmer. I'm the Vice President of Sales for the Indirect Channel. Uh, we sell a wide range of products, everything from laboratory consumables to benchtop equipment, some instrumentation, and diagnostics and analytical standards as well. So a big product offering. So our industry is very diverse in terms of segments. What would you describe uh, your company's role and what would you describe it as a segment? Uh, when you say segment, um, what, what comes to mind, I, I, you know, I, I think distribution or, or sales, that segment. Um, like I mentioned in my intro, uh, most of Eppendorf products are, are made in Germany, and then we, we're bringing them over, of course, and then we sell through distribution, like Cole Palmer, or channel partners, we'll call them. But I would say our segment is mainly distribution and sales. Um, for us, we really have a different business model. So Cole Palmer has been around since 1955 and was really started as more of a catalog company as a distributor, really targeting more of the industrial side of the market. Um, over the years, basically, there's been a lot of pivoting over into the life sciences side of it much more. And also um, moving more from, manu uh, from distribution into manufacturing as a supplier. So there's been a lot of changes for our business. We've acquired a lot of different companies and really target um, many different areas. Uh, you know, we, we sell a, a wide range of products ranging from general benchtop equipment to um, into healthcare, you know, um, diagnostics. So, you know, a, a large breadth of product that we support. That's great. How about you? Yeah, so um, BMP Medical is on the manufacturing side. Um, we are, uh, so we've been in business for 45 years this year. And our business was originally started uh, with products that were sold into the research and um, uh, lab space. Um, now we have kind of transitioned where we still make those products for, for the distribution chains, but um, we have more morphed into a contract manufacturing in the medical device space. Um, so we do injection molding, we do injection blow molding, um, and you know, we try to do a lot of this is done here in America, here in the United States, um, and we pride ourselves on heavily validated uh, medical products. That's interesting. So our panel here seems to be balanced between distribution and manufacturing. So my company manufactures porous specialty materials, predominantly filtration products. So when you think of filtration and separation, these are the products that we manufacture. Okay. In specialty materials, glass microfiber, cellulose, and some polymetric membranes. And our market is evolving continuously with advancements in material science as well as the demands of science. And so that's a topic that I'd like to discuss a little bit is, how would you say science influences your business? There is definitely a circular chain of supply, demand, the requirements of science, and then ultimately the commercial side of science, how we supply those products to the market. So how would you see science influencing your business and how do you think your business influence, influences science ultimately? Well, I, 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 like you said, I, it's circular. Um, you know, we listen to our feedback with the scientists really want the desire and we try to try to uh, come up with that on the commercial side try to make that <clears throat> if we're the one of the uh, first uh, we that's a big win right so every company is trying to do that so like you said it's a, really a circular type of loop we listen 
and try to make something that they need, they want. Um, but it starts with listening to what's, you know, w what they want. And also, too, their research kind of puts us on a path that, you know, right now CRISPR is big. That's a type of gene um, uh, research, editing research. So we look at the path that they're on, and that's kind of our, our own research that you know, we kind of go down that path. But I think it starts with, like you said, feedback, and it's just kind of a circular uh, path, system, I guess you could say, so. Yeah, absolutely. I think you're really, you know, you're trying to solve a problem. Um, you know, you, a lot of times we will be connected with key opinion leaders in the field that um, we can speak with on, as far as what they do on their bench, you know, what types of um, applications, what types of processes um, are they working with, but that feeds into the trends that are happening in the world, you know, what type of sicknesses or diseases are we trying to cure, um, you know, even when you think about the breadth of uh, manufacturing and, and what science goes into, it's everything from the clothes we wear to the food we eat to the medicine that we take and, you know, to even the diagnostics of testing, um, you know, of, of disease. Most of our, our products are uh, research use only, R-U-O, or R-U-I-O, <laughs> excuse me. Um, a couple of things are listed, a couple of centrifuges are listed. Um, but we do have um, a handful of people that manage that regula regulation for those products and they deal with the FDA. Uh, any requirements uh, we have to have, um, they deal with that. So yeah, we have a, a couple things, but, but the market we're involved with more so is more research, less than uh, you know, the FDA or you know, that, that, that side things. Okay, great. Now sort of switching gears a bit. Um, what would you say, based on your experiences with this current company you're with or previous employers, are the segments and job roles that you've had? Um, so sales is vastly different than product development. Right. Um, what have you been involved in throughout your career? And I'll start with you, John. Yeah, so um, in my career, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm unique as we are a family business, and I've been able to see the evolution of our company, where uh, a lot of the products that we made were our own products, and we still sell those today. Um, but uh, now, I would say, um, you know, the, the segment or market that we're, we're providing to consumables. So we're on the consumable side uh, of the business, um, and, and you know, throughout my roles, uh, I've been in project management, I've been in sales, um, and you know, it kind of comes back to what you said earlier is, realistically, um, whether I'm in sales, project management, management overall at the, at the company, we're, we're solving problems at the end of the day. And that has been uh, evident, and it's, uh, it's a learning process for me every day, um, but uh, I like the, the fast-paced environment that we're in and the different uh, problems that we have to deal with on a daily basis. It isn't the same thing every day. It is, it is a different challenge uh, every day. Absolutely. So I actually started out of college and I worked in a lab. It was not a research lab, it was a manufacturing lab. So I, I made diagnostic test kits and optimized all the reagents and everything. So from there I um, actually uh, went to get an MBA and kind of worked and did that at the same time to move over into the business side of things. Um, I actually started off in sales. Um, I've had different sales positions, but have also done some time with product management, had that as an opportunity, also channel management and business development. So it's been nice to have kind of wear different hats, have some different perspectives and work a little bit differently with other, you know, um, other areas of, of each of the organizations as well. So I mean, it gives you a really broad view of, um, you know, what, what each of the what our companies do, how everybody works together, and you have a little bit of a different voice in every one of those areas as well. So I, I would agree with you, No Day has been the same, which has been a lot of fun, and, um, and really have enjoyed you know, the journey overall. So it's been great. great. Well, I've been in sales for over 30 years, uh, just sales, but it's, sales has really evolved. I think when I first started, it was like, everything in the catalog was, was pretty much what we regurgitated to the customer because there was no internet, so there was no, no way they could find this information. So we were the information bearer, right? Now they can get this very easy. So sales has evolved from regurgitating specs, right? Way back when, and then it became understanding with the customer how to solve their issue, their problem. Now it's really that and also understanding of the workflow. 
the better you understand the workflow, you understand what they're trying to do. And the better you understand that, the better you can give feedback to manufacturing or marketing, you know, what products we might need to solve their problem. So you, you really have to understand their work, the workflow they're, they're doing and what they need, listen to them. And if you, if you know that, you're in a really good spot and to give feedback to you know, manufacturing, marketing, and so on. So it's really evolved over the years. But I will say it's always been a lot of fun, a lot of fun, um, and very rewarding, definitely. Dawn, you've worked on both sides. So you've worked in manufacturing, also in development, and then uh, ultimately in distribution. Absolutely. What would you say the interaction between distribution and manufacturing is in terms of need and design and, and commercialization. Um, which, which feeds which? Um, well, that's a great question. I mean, I think it's a little bit of, you know, kind of it goes both ways because, you know, as a distributor, um, you're out, you're talking to customers, you're selling different products, you actually can become the um, representative for not only your own products that you might manufacture, but for many other manufacturers' products as well. So, I mean, I think at the end of the day, it's kind of having that connection with the customer and fulfilling their need again. But, you know, you listen to them and you pull in the right people. I mean, a lot of it for us is having the connections and knowing, you know, who to bring in at the right time, whether it's your own team mm -hmm. or if it's a team of, of people that you work with that are in other manufacturers or suppliers. Um, from a manufacturing standpoint, you know, it's definitely the difference is really just that, you know, you're running the project, you, you know, run it from beginning to end. Whereas in distribution, if a customer wants something specifically, you might have to pull in a special team. And that would be more on the side of if, you, if there's a special or unique product that's needed. But, you know, I think um, with the, within the industry, though, you know, customers, um, I think that's where there's just so much variation in the industry overall or in the opportunities that are out there because you know you can work for a smaller company um, you can work for a family-owned company or you can and you can work for a company that um, sells some of the basic items or something very very unique and um, you know very technological very highly advanced um, or you can um, you know work for you know a large manufacturer that makes some of the basic products I mean there's just such a um, wide array of jobs out there where you can be the expert um, from a, you know a technology standpoint or you kind of bring the full solution of everything a customer might need on the bench and I think that's a big difference from manufacturing you normally have more of a specialty more of a niche um, versus in distribution you're normally you know offering a, a wide selection of products Absolutely. How about you? Well, I think some of the things she said, or pretty much everything, is right on. Uh, I'm a little biased. I'm, I'm in the uh, distribution sales side, so I, I, I do believe that our, the feedback that we give to manufacturing, um, if it's good for based on from the customer to us to the manufacturing, um, we come up with products that solve, solve problems. Um, every once in a blue moon, more so way back when, uh, manufacturing came up with something that salespeople are kind of like, well, I don't know if that's going to work or not. But the best products they come out with or develop are those based on feedback that we give them from the customer. Um, and if we can do it quickly, develop that product quick enough and solve their problem, we, we really have a win. Yeah, yeah. So what I'm hopeful of is that we are informing the viewers of these videos about our industry and the segments of our industry. And it is really, truly multifaceted. So there is, of course, the business side. And a solid business education and curriculum plays and a role and can benefit someone coming into our market. Yep. And then the sciences, of course. And then understanding uh, the basic segments of the industry. So you have durables and consumables. You have instruments and chemicals. And all of these little segments play a role in our market. And there's ultimately a place for virtually every background. Um, sure. You know, I find it fascinating when you walk through a laboratory and you look at just everything in there. Yeah. And it's easy to overlook and overthink the fact that there, there is an origin of those products. Not only did the product come to be in that lab, but then work backwards and work through the process of need and design and manufacture, and then ultimately negotiating the sale. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that have 
really helped me in my career is just a broad and basic understanding of the sciences and business. And that's something that I'm trying to convey now uh, to students is if you are a STEM uh, student and you're involved in the sciences or math, engineering, um, try to get a, a, yeah. a, a basic understanding or a minor in business mm -hmm. and vice versa. So if you're a business major, consider science or engineering as a minor and just have a basic understanding. And if you can become the liaison between business and science in our market, that is a, a solid career path. And one of the things that have always interested me about our market is just the longevity of careers. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, yeah. Um, you know, 30, 30 years, years, 30 yeah, years, yeah, yeah. 20, 20 years, and, and eight years. Yeah. And you foresee a long future in, in your career. Absolutely. And, and like you were saying, like, you know, I, I more have the experience on the business side of things, but I would uh, advise, you know, I, I, I wish I had more uh, scientific background. And so any of the students that are thinking about this, you know, it is, it, it's vice versa, both ways. You know, the, the, you, can be, you can be on the science side and affect business um, in, a, in, in, a, in a big way and vice versa. I think it's also like natural curiosity because I've always just thought, you know, having the chance to go in and visit customers and see how they're manufacturing things, whether, you know, it's a huge operation or if it's bench top, you know, making reagents or something like that. It's always super interesting to see what they're doing. Um, and that was always really exciting to me, just kind of walking out of there. And I think that, you know, within our industry. The business side is important. Um, the science side is important, but you know, on both ways, you know, a lot of times the science, um, people who major in science can, can pick up business and kind of learn, especially kind of coming in commercially. And I think having, you know, the, the, um, the science side of it or the um, business side of it, you know, it's, you go into all of these research labs where people have just the most unique um, and, and very <laughs> complex targets of everything that they're doing. So you're, you're not going to, you know, you're going to know, you know, about a, an inch of that, you know, versus, you know, it's such a wide, um, a, a wide breadth of just research that they're doing and they're so specific and they, you know, so you have to learn a lot from your customers and I think having that interaction for them to talk to you about what they're doing, what they need, um, kind of, enables you to, to be good at this um, and to you know have a, a good um, career in the sciences with just a little bit like you said Jim a little bit of business or a little bit of science but you can I think you can start with one or the other too well and, and that's a good point so one of the things that I think the perception of our market is uh, it it becomes uh, almost a little intimidating because you feel like you never know enough um, that you have to be an expert in in everything, and you really don't. Uh, our market has become a collaborative process. You just have to know enough to be dangerous, sort of. And uh, know your role, and know your role within your company, and also know the capabilities. And that's, that's one of the most beneficial parts about being employed by a company that has broad capabilities, is understanding and being interested in those capabilities. And if you understand that, you can bring those capabilities to the relationship and through a collaborative process you don't have to know everything uh you have to know where to find it sort of yeah. those are your assets yes. right those, those are your assets those, those are, are your the, tools yeah those are the tools but, that, but that you're right with. uh you don't have to know it can be intimidating because people think to get into this i got to know a lot of science i really do well, to give an example, there, when I got into it, there was no PCR way back in the day. So a lot of the training I got was with my employer. But yeah, you're right. I did have to understand, okay, what, a, what the heck is a base pair? So I had to say I had, had to have some basic understanding, but not a lot. Um, a lot of the training I, I have or I got was from my employers. Things change so quickly. So a lot of things... Um, that we have now, we didn't have back when I was in school, a lot of the uh, science. Um, so all you really need to get into it is a basic understanding of, of science. And I, I totally agree. If you have a, a science, a little understanding, and also an understanding of the business side of things, that's a great combination. It really is. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's really interesting to me when 
two teams are working together and collaborating on a project. And generally in, in the commercial side of science, you've got a customer side and you've got a supplier side. And it really is interesting when the experts from both sides of uh, the deal come together. And that's when the, that's when the big stuff happens. Absolutely. That's when business is interfacing directly with each other and the sciences are understanding the needs and capabilities. Right. And, and that's when the biggest uh, moves in the deal uh, occur. So I'm gonna switch gears. So I'm gonna ask you and put you on the spot. Twofold question. A, what in your educational background would you say has helped your career? And B, what would you say you perhaps could have used more of to further your career? Great question. Um, I would say that the, the thing that helped me the most was the uh, biology. Uh, uh, I have a minor in bio, but what that did is it gave me a basic framework to understand the training that I got with the company. They're the ones really training me more so um, on the current techniques that researchers use. So we, they, were, they weren't around back in the 80s, but I did understand how you know the nomenclature uh, that the, the, the uh, training was, you know, based on, right? So that was that, that was huge. So you, you don't have to have a major or an MBA or um, uh, master's in, in science or a doctor in science, but have some basic understanding. That was huge. So, so for me, that was a, a biology minor. Um, what I wish I would have had more of maybe the business side of things. I didn't have any business classes, so a lot of that, again, I learned with, with the company. Uh, but, it, you know, I wish I had more of that. So I would say that, definitely. So I, I think a killer combo is a science background and an MBA. That's, that's really great, a great combination. And that's me. So I've got um, an undergraduate degree in biology. Um, and I started off, like I said, um, you know, working in a production lab and um, went to school for my master's in business at the same time. Yeah. So um, that, was, uh, that was fun. That was intense. Um, yeah. You know, I, I think after I finished my MBA, I didn't know what I would do with my time, but I found something to do with my time for sure, <laughs> um, working, which has been great. Um, but no, I really um, enjoyed that. And um, I'm really glad that I did get my MBA. I think that really definitely propelled and opened a lot of doors um, absolutely. Um, I think the one thing I would I would want to go back and do a little bit more of, which I think it's never too late though too, is just maybe a little bit more on the technical side. You know, I know there's, you know, you're never going to know everything as far as just, um, you know, the projects and the research that goes on in this area, but um, maybe in a couple of areas there's some things I would have liked to, you know, d dived a little bit further into. Great. Yeah, and, and, and you know, for me, um, my main school schooling was in, in the business realm. Um, and I, you know, it's very useful now, but I also feel that, uh, as you were saying, that, you know, there's a lot of on-job training. And I'm not saying that school isn't, uh, it's not, it's needed. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the, the specifics of each company is different, right? Um, and the training that you receive from the different companies that you work for is different. So you'll learn a lot from those companies. Um, and on on the, where, where it's lacking for me was on the technical side. Um, you know, having a better understanding of the science would be fabulous for me. Um, but it even goes even deeper into you know um, one of our core competencies is injection molding. It is a scientific process, um, and I do know quite a bit about it now. But you know there were opportunities for me to learn more early on, and I probably should have taken advantage of, of some of those opportunities earlier in my career. Yeah. 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 And, and and that's a good point. So the availability of information really never ceases. Uh, we we live in an age where if you want to educate yourself in any area, uh, it just takes time. The availability of information is, is certainly so wide and, and there for us. And as you're in your role, you can continue to uh, mature and develop capabilities. I know for me, um, perhaps the most valuable asset that I've had educationally was just a broad introduction to the sciences and then to business. So I don't consider myself expert in any one field, but I have a broad enough base to draw from, and that has served me very well. I've worked on projects 
very broad scope projects where it ranged literally from geology to radiochemistry in one project. And I was so impressed with the narrow field of focus of each of the sciences and the disciplines in there, but ultimately I had to make it all come together in a project and that, that was a value to my company. And um, I just, I find that very impressive that our market offers that. Yeah. That you can, you can come to this industry with a very specific narrow band of knowledge and be equally as valued as someone with a very broad base very of knowledge and make it happen. Very true. Yeah, yeah and, I, and I would say, you know, being on the younger side of somebody is, you know, being a college student, being in, in school is, um, one of the big things I've learned is you don't have to have the answers to everything. You can utilize all of those subject matter experts in the different areas and bring them to your team. And be, that brings so much value rather than trying to uh, figure it out yourself. Totally agree. And I think that's one of the, like you say, one of the hesitations as a college student. They think, God, I got to know all this stuff. No, you, you really don't. Now you have to know where to find it. Uh, and we have people that can help you, but you're absolutely right. Yep. That's one of the things you learn quickly. At first you're thinking, oh shit, I, I don't know this. You know, I think the customer, is a, they have a PhD. I don't have that. They might know more than me. No, they, number one, they don't own your product like you do, know it. Number two, they don't know where to get the answer. You do. Right. So that, that's huge. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That's a good point. Well, I think this has been a great conversation, and I hope that we've inspired people to consider our market as a career path. Yep. And I appreciate your time, and I thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. Thank, thank you. you.